Welcome to the second episode of this uh, Dreamlow High School series. So in the first episode, we set up a nice little system to submit and retrieve our scores uh, from the Dreamlow database. So all I want to do in this episode is to take this information and uh, actually display it in our game world. So I'm going to just drag this console off to the side and display my game world a little bit more prominently over here. And uh, let's create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this display high scores. And I'm going to attach it to the same high scores game object that the high scores script is attached to. And uh, before we do anything in the display high school script, let us design a low interface. So uh, I'm going to turn this background color to a nice dark gray. I'm also going to create a new UI object, which is going to be the uh, canvas for our whole UI to, uh, to be contained in. And let's just set this to pixel perfect. And I'm going to create a uh, text UI object. And let's give this a white color. And if we just press T or uh, choose this tool up here, this is the, uh, uh, the rec transform tool. We can uh, just give ourselves some more room here, turn the font size up a bit. I'm just going to uh, change the vertical overflow to the overflow instead of truncate so that uh, this um, doesn't sort of cut off and disappear if it goes outside of its box. It's just a bit annoying uh, when it does that. And uh, I'm just going to position this in the center. And let's call this our leaderboards. All right, need to scale it up a tiny bit more. OK, so you'll notice now if we adjust the screen size, this doesn't really work as we want it to. Um, so let's go back onto our canvas and we can change the UI scale mode from constant pixel size to actually scale with the screen size. And uh, let's give it our reference resolution. I'm working in 16 by 9, so I'll just give it, say, 1280 by 720. And we're going to have to adjust the size now again. Um, just scale it up. All right, increase the font size. There we go, that looks about right. And now you'll see that uh, if we change this, it scales nicely with our game world. All right, so I'm going to create a empty game object, and I'm going to call this the high scores. And I'll just keep all of my high score related UI nicely arranged under that. And I can call this the um, title. And let's duplicate this text here, drag it down, and uh, I'm going to change the alignment to uh, go to the left. And let's just create a little mock-up of, um, of a score. So I'll type in my name and some score. And we can decrease the font size. Something like that. All right, let's position that. That looks good. Just for some color, I'll uh, change this to something reddish. And now let's grab this and duplicate it a bunch of times. I'll first give it a name, um, call it score01. And when we duplicate, you can see it automatically renames it score zero two. You can drag this down. Just drag down a bunch of them. Um, I'm going to make two columns. This will be, let, let me create another empty child. I'll call this uh, high scores 01. Actually, I'm going to call it column 01. And I'll just set this to sort of go around the bounds there and just parent all of this to column one. And now I'm going to duplicate column one, and that will be now called column two, and just drag this over here. 
All right, so we've got a very basic uh, leaderboards UI set up. So we can now start fiddling around with our display high scores class. So we want to be able to access those uh, text thingies that we just created. So we need to say using Unity Engine dot UI. And now we can create a public array of texts like this. And we can call this our high score text. And uh, let's also get a reference to the high scores class. Um, I'll just call this the high score manager. And in the start method, let's go through each of our high score texts. So we'll just uh, do a little for loop. Let's say for int i equals zero, i less than uh, however many high score texts we have. So we can just say high score text dot length, increment i, and now we'll say high score text i dot text is equal to. So first we want the position, the, the sort of number that it is. So since i starts at zero, we'll just do i plus one. And then let's add in a full stop. And for now, let's just say fetching dot dot dot, saying it's uh, currently fetching the information from the, from the server. And we can also just uh, set high score manager equal to get component high score. All right, let's see if that's working. Go back into Unity. Um, we've now got this little array field here. I'm going to go up here and click this lock, which just allows me to uh, select a whole bunch of these at a time without uh, changing the inspector. And we can drag these all in here and just make sure that they're numbered correctly from one to five. And then select column two and drag those in. And just once again, just double check they're all been assigned correctly. And I'm going to uncheck this lock now. And uh, let's see what happens when we press play. Okay, so you can see these have all changed to be numbered correctly from 1 to 10. And they're saying fetching dot dot dot, which at the moment is a lie. It's not fetching. So let's go back into our script and actually make it retrieve those, uh, those scores. So let's create a I enumerator called refresh, not redresh, refresh high scores. So this is just going to call the high score manager and ask to download the high scores every couple of seconds. So we'll say while true, uh, we'll call high scores manager dot download high scores. And then we can tell it to pause, uh, yield return new, wait for seconds, and here we can specify our refresh rate. Um, uh, I can, I'll just say 30 seconds. And now all we need to do is call this from the start method. So we can say start coroutine, uh, refresh high scores. All right. And now we need a public method to actually assign the scores to the text once it's been retrieved. So we can call this on high scores downloaded. And this will take in a array of high scores. Um, just to prevent any confusion, remember we've got the high scores class, which is called high scores, and then we've got the high score struct which is for storing the username and score in. So make sure you don't get these two <laughs> mixed up because um, that will cause problems. So we can call this array the high score list. And I'm just going to copy this little for loop over here. All right, so I'm going to delete the fetching dot 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 part in here. So now it's just the rank and a full stop and a space. So now we want to check if the uh, high score list dot length is 
um, greater than i because of course uh, we might have more high school texts than we actually have high schools um, if not many people have played the game yet so if uh, if we run out of high schools then we'll just show the position and a dot otherwise we can add on high schools text um, i dot text is e well we want to actually add to it plus equal to um, the high schools list i dot username followed by let's say a dash and then high school list i dot score all right so now we need to go into the high schools class and we need a reference to our display high schools so let's create a variable display high schools which we can call maybe the high schools display and uh, can delete all of this from the awake method that was just for testing obviously in the previous episode and we can say high schools display is equal to get component display high schools and now whenever we uh, have finished downloading the high schools which is over here um, if there is no error if there's no error then we want to say display high scores oh I called it high scores display didn't I um, then we want to say high scores oops high scores display dot on high scores downloaded and we want to pass in our list of high scores all right let's go into unity and see if it's working and it is all right cool so there are just a few odds and ends that i want to look at before we wrap up so in the high schools class we'd ideally want this add new high school method to be static because that would allow us to easily access it from any script that wants to upload a new high school so let's make it static but now the problem is um we can't call start coroutine uh, normally from a static method so what we need to do is get a static reference to our class so we'll say static high scores and we can call this instance and in the awake method we'll just say instance is equal to this and now we're allowed to do this if we say instance.startCoroutine and instance.uploadNewHighScore uh, spelt instance wrong all right another thing we could do is over here where we're uploading the high scores um, here where we say if the upload is successful we could then just make it automatically go ahead and download the high scores so that our uh, high scores display is always up to date so just to very quickly test this last little bit that we've done I'm going to create a C -sharp script called game and um, this is really not going to be a very fun game but uh, let's create an empty game object called game to attach it to and opening up the game script um, let's just have an update method and in here we can say if the user um, presses uh, presses down the spacebar then we will give them a random score so random dot range from say 0 to 2000 and let's generate a random username so we'll set it equal to nothing by default and let's create a string alphabet and let's go a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z all right now if we just have a little for loop int i equals zero i well not android input i less than random dot range say from five to ten for the length of the name i plus plus 
then we can say username plus equals alphabet random dot range from zero to the length of the alphabet um, alphabet dot length all right and then over here we can simply say high scores dot add new high score username and score all right let's try that out press play and I'm going to press spacebar and we've got Bim getting 1086 and Oxl 781 so the point is it's working um, and obviously you replace uh, <laughs> this junk with an actual game and you just call high scores or add new high score and it will all be managed nicely with the system we have set up. All right, so that brings us to the end of this second episode. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any requests for other game development related series, I would be happy to consider those. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.